Welcome to 2021. It is the middle of January already, which is crazy because it feels like the year just started. I wanted to share the things that really got me through the year 2020. There are some intentions that I believe really help you focus your awareness to things that really matter. So one of my favorite quotes that I actually have on my home screen of my phone is where your awareness goes, your energy flows, control where your energy flows so you can control what is manifesting in your life. And this quote is one that I got from Dan Dapani, who is a former monk, and I think he's a Hindu priest, but I've watched so many of his TED Talks and it's really resonated with me because a lot of books and YouTube videos tell you, yeah, you have to transform your life with like the habits you make and really sticking to routine, etc. But Dan Dapani hone into why we're doing this. Like, why are we setting habits? Yes. Like, Whatever I water will grow. Energy is the same way as well. If I took my energy and I invested it into something or someone positive, it will grow and become more positive. If I took my energy and invested it into something or someone negative, it will grow and become more negative. So the whole goal is to direct energy in a proportionate way to all the people and things in life that truly matter to he us. He really emphasized the presence of free will and your role in what your life looks like. Don't know if that makes too much sense, but as I understand this concept of being intentional of where your attention is going, these are the five rules that I've tried to stick to. I'm going to continue to try my best to abide by them this year. The first one is social media and news boundaries. I think this goes up and down for me. Like there are times where I am just consuming so much news, like during the election week for sure, when COVID started and I wanted to know anything and everything about the virus and how it spreads. Like I was on Google and on Twitter maybe like 12 hours a day, which is insane. So this is where I stopped and was like, okay, how productive is this? Like how many news articles do I have to read about the same thing over and over again before I feel comfortable with the news? Um, and the answer is not that many. <laughs> the same goes for social media and mindlessly scrolling. I watched a documentary called Social Dilemma that really outlines how companies and these social media networks use algorithms to really just feed you what you want. It's an endless pit of like serotonin and instant gratification. But at the end of it, like what are you feeling? You're not really feeling that much more connected to your friends or your family and you end up feeling a little lost. You give yourself more chances for comparison and self-judgment and that's not helpful thoughts to be having especially if you're home alone or trying to stay positive as the world starts to open back up number two which connects to social media is to really connect with someone at least once a day and for me that looks like a facetime with a best friend or a family member. This can also just be like a lengthy text conversation with someone you miss or someone you haven't talked to in a long time. But just having the intention of really connecting with someone gives you that gratification that endless scrolling on social media will not give you. I've had a lot of amazing conversations during the last year just from checking in on someone and it really helps you appreciate the people around you and the people that aren't around you physically who still remain in your mind and your thoughts. So number three is the one that I've completely struggled with, which is exercise. I and a lot of my friends took the first couple months of quarantine really seriously in terms of the mindset of like, okay, this is never gonna happen ever again. Let's take this time and like go through a total glow up and enter summer 2020 with like a bikini bod and abs and like an amazing ass. Not realistic long term. I have gone through months without exercising at all and not touching a yoga mat or doing anything remotely active. And it's clear to me when I do exercise that I feel much more productive and I feel more in tune with my body and my strength. So 
that's what I hold on to. This is definitely the hardest of all the things on this list for me. There are people who find exercising second nature. It was just instilled in them when they were young, but my family never exercised, never treated it as something fun or something that, you know, is healthy and had to be done. It was more of a chore. So that's something I'm still trying to overcome is like enjoying the workouts and enjoying strengthening my body. It's something that's really hard. <laughs> I'm actually in workout gear at the moment to encourage me to work out after filming this. Next up on here, I have flow activities. So flow, it describes a state where you're fully immersed in something that you're doing and you're super passionate and time just seems to pass you by. You know those activities where you look up and you're like, whoa, like an hour passed? That's what I mean by flow activities. And I just watched Soul and there is a clip where they demonstrated that concept, which is awesome. You humans are really into something. It feels like you're in another place. It feels like you're in the zone, right? Yeah. Well, this is the zone. It's the space between the physical and spiritual. So flow activities can be anything, right? For me, I, I try to incorporate one flow activity a day. Painting was something that I loved doing at the beginning of quarantine. It passed time and I enjoyed it a lot. I recently moved into learning how to play the ukulele, so that's been taking a lot of my time. Um, but what's great about these activities and hobbies is it puts you into a state of meditation. You are physically doing something, but also letting your mind rest. And last but not least, and it's super intuitive, but sleep is the number one thing that that really determines your mood and sets you up for a good day. I would say everyone's different in terms of how much sleep you need to function at your best. You know your body the best. I'm not gonna tell you how many hours you need to sleep or when to sleep or when to wake up. Feel it out, you know, everyone's different, but do what's best for you. You want to utilize your day the best you can and Notice how many hours you need in order to feel that little pep in your step when you wake up the next morning. Pay attention to how sleeping late does to your body. Does it make you more groggy the next morning? But yeah, I'm not giving you any guidelines with that. I'm just telling you to be aware of how your sleeping patterns affect your habits and your overall mood. Give yourself the best chance to succeed by sleeping. So super simple, right? <laughs> Those are the ground rules that I set myself in 2020 that will or have carried through for this year. It's up for interpretation and I think that's the most important part is not being so hard on yourself when you don't meet every one of these steps every single day. The less harsh you are in terms of like, I have to change my life, this is 2021. The less pressure you put on yourself to make something of the year, the more joy you'll find in doing everyday things. It'll feel less daunting and it'll fit more naturally into your day-to-day -day processes and your routines and that's when it sticks. It doesn't stick when you're breathing down your own neck and judging yourself for not doing something. That gives it such a terrible feeling and why would you want to continue if it's just going to be like a negative cycle? really open up to yourself and accept your flaws, accept that we're all not perfect. Even people who work out every single day and exercise and you're like, wow, how do they do all this every day? Like I could never do that. Maybe they're lacking in another spot in their life. Maybe they're not connecting with people as much. Maybe they aren't sleeping as well. Like everyone's different. It's your life. It's your own body. You know what works for you. So keep that in mind. I wish you the best 2021 and I will speak to you soon.